All right, hey everybody. This is chapter one from the book. Chapter one, to start off with, is all about setting ourselves up to be successful in geography class. Section one begins by discussing globes and maps. The challenge with the Earth is that it is this huge planet, and we can only see at one point in time just what our eyes can see. But we know that we are part of something bigger than ourselves. This planet is 3D. It's a huge sphere floating in space. So in order to be able to figure out and understand the planet and where we are on that planet and the relationships with other things on that planet, people had to figure out a way to show the Earth on a smaller scale so that we could comprehend our relationships in terms of distance to other places on that map. So to do that, people started using globes and maps. So a globe is a scale model of the Earth. This is exactly what Earth looks like, but way smaller, like I can hold it in my hand. Earth is huge, but this is kind of like shrunk down. It's way smaller. So the most accurate type of a map isn't a map at all, it's a globe. But the problem with the globe is it's kind of like awkward to carry this thing around. I couldn't just be, you know, uh, 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 walking down the street with my globe because everybody would look at me like I was crazy. So what people started doing instead is that we made maps, which were a lot easier to like fold up and put in your pocket or to access on your smartphone, although they didn't have those when they first started making maps. A map, on the other hand, is a symbolic representation of the Earth or part of the Earth. So we take a globe and like we unwrap it, it becomes a map. We take it from 3D to 2D. The people who do this are called cartographers. They are the people who actually make a map. Now their job is really hard because they have to take this huge planet that they can't see and they have to make a 3D scale replica of the world. That's called a globe. Then they have to take a globe and they have to somehow translate it into two dimensions. That's super hard to do because it causes what are called distortions. Those are a change that makes the map slightly inaccurate in terms of the size, shape, and distance shown on a map. If you look at a map, Greenland and South America seem to be about the same size. But when we look at a globe, we see that Greenland up here is a lot smaller than South America down here. The problem is when we make a map, cartographers had to spread it out a little bit in order for it to be convenient. And as a result, it made Greenland, which in reality is not, it's a big island, but it's not that big, it looks exactly the same size as South America, but in reality that's not the way it is. It's just a matter of the way that we make maps. Now we also have to keep in mind that because a map is a 2D representation of a 3D globe, we have to think about a little bit the relationships between different places. Now in math class, I'm sure you've already learned, or you will learn soon, that the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. So the line between Shanghai and Chicago, the shortest way to get between those two cities is a straight line. But the problem is when we're using a map, it's not necessarily on the map the shortest route. And that's because the 2D, 3D conversion thing doesn't quite work. So on a map, it looks like the shortest distance between Shanghai and China should be a straight line, east-west going straight there. But actually, the shortest route is a curved line, which goes up and over the curvature of the Earth. So what do I mean by that? So here's Chicago. If I want to take an airplane all the way 
to Shanghai. On a map, it looks like I should just take the airplane, fly, 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 and land in Shanghai. But if you actually do the calculations, it's shorter to fly from Chicago here, up and over Canada, over Alaska, over Russia, and down. So if we go, it's actually a shorter distance. It doesn't seem like it when you're looking at a map, but when you do the calculations on a globe, it's actually shorter that way. Now the next section coming up is projections. We're actually gonna skip that and talk about that in class. So move down to the third Roman numeral on your notes, which is determining locations. So we've tried, we've already figured out um, how the, the relationship between the Earth, globes, and maps. They're, they're just representations of planet Earth. Now, we have to try and figure out how, where, well, where are we on this gigantic planet? The way that geographers do that is by using a system called latitude and longitude. You might have come across this already, um, but we're going to talk about it again, and then we're going to practice it in class. So latitude is the measure of the distance north or south of the equator. So each of these lines going up and each of these lines going down is a latitude line. And then the equator is the line that goes perfectly around the center of the Earth. Now, le longitude is the measure east or west of the prime meridian, which runs kind of off the coast of uh, England and Africa and down this way. To figure out where we are, we figure out where latitude and longitude lines cross. The point they cross tells you exactly where you are on the planet. Latitude and longitude help you figure out the absolute location of a place, which is simply where those two lines cross. Now this is a system that people just kind of made up. It doesn't actually, like you don't, you, there aren't lines literally on the earth. People made it up, made up this little grid to help them figure out where they are. Now there's another way that we figure out where we are, and that's called the relative location. A relative location is the place in relationship to another place. So if we use this all the time. For example, I am next to this globe. I am in front of that camera. I am southeast of Chicago. I am east of the Mississippi. These are just kind of words that tell you, you know, I'm kind of related to this place in some way. There are tons and tons of points on the globe that are southeast of Chicago. So you can't really figure out exactly where you are if someone says, oh, we're southeast of Chicago. That's why we need something more precise. That's why there are absolute uh, locations. So a relative location is just the place in relationship to another place. It's not that accurate, but it kind of tells you roughly where you are. Another way that uh, geographers kind of divide up the earth and figure out where we are is by talking about hemispheres. Now I'm sure that you know this, but let's go over it again. So we got the equator here. The northern hemisphere is anything north of the equator. So all of this top part here. The southern hemisphere is anything south of the equator, so the bottom part of the globe. The eastern hemisphere, which is basically the old world, is anything east of the prime meridian all the way to the international date line. And then the western hemisphere is anything west of the prime meridian. So that is primarily um, the new world. And then we think that we, being in Merrillville, are in the northern hemisphere and the western hemisphere at the same time. And then we're also going to be skipping the Roman numeral number four, that's IV. Roman numerals are kind of tricky sometimes. <laughs> so we're skipping that one too, and we'll talk about that in class as well. So that finishes up chapter one, section one. Now let's move on to section two. Section two 
is all about different ways of thinking, the way that geographers think. Now we, we talked about kind of some of the skills that geographers need in order to visualize this massive planet that we live on. Section two is kind of about thinking um, in this particular subject. So have you noticed that like in a math class, for example, you're thinking about mathy things. So you're trying to find numbers or relationships between numbers or relationships between numbers and uh, a particular shape or a particular line or something like that. That's kind of what we're going for in math. Or if we talk about English, we're looking at you know, characters, we're looking at storylines, we're looking at themes, we're thinking about symbols. So geography is the study of the earth and all the living creatures on that earth, which includes people. Now, don't get this confused with geology, which is the study of rocks, or geometry, which is the study of shapes, or genealogy, which is the study of our ancestors. Don't get those confused. We're talking about geography, which is the study of the earth. And as a result, we're looking at the different um, ways that the earth and the things on that earth relate to each other. One of the ways that geographers try and figure out this world is we think about it in spatial terms. That's what we've already been doing with the earth and the globe and the map. We think about places in relationship to other places in absolute and relative locations. Geographers also think using generalities about a particular place or region. A region is an area with similar characteristics like climates, vegetation, language, cultures, and religions. So when we're talking about, say, uh, the United States, we might say, okay, most people in the United States are Christian. Of course, you might be sitting there thinking, well, I'm not Christian. Well, that's okay, that's perfectly fine, but when we say most people were making a generality about a particular place, not everyone fits into those generalities, and that's perfectly fine. There are going to be exceptions to the rule. Geographers also look at ecosystems. So it's not just thinking about the Earth, it's also thinking about some of the, the relationships on that Earth. So ecosystems are a community of plants and animals that depend on one another. Geographers also look at the movement of people, goods, and ideas. How do things spread across this huge planet? And also, we think about human and environmental interactions. So how do people interact with the environment? How do we interact with this planet? Now to figure that out, we use different research methods, which we're going to be using over the course of the uh, class. You might not even realize you're doing it, because a lot of them are kind of obvious, let's be honest. <laughs> so direct observation. You see it. Mapping. We make maps. We make um, relationship chart kind of things. Interviews. We talk with people. Or we interview a primary source. We analyze statistics. We look at the numbers, crunch the numbers, figure, figure things out. And we also use technology. Computers, um, GPS, we're going to work with those things too. So that's kind of how geographers try and think about the world. And that's what we're going to be doing over the course of this class. So that finishes up chapter one. Um, it goes by pretty quick, so if you had questions or you didn't get all of them, feel free to rewind the video, watch it again, pause it. That's what's great about these videos, is you can watch them as many times as you need. If you still have a question after doing that, bring it into class, no big deal, and I'll do my best to um, help you understand. Okay, thank you so much for watching.